said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Grab your Bibles and let's go. Let's go to work. Genesis chapter 37. to reach the masses the men of every <laughs> for Jesus yes 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 if I I'll draw Just one time, lift him up. Ah, lift him up. Ah. Till. If I. I'll draw Genesis chapter 37 starting with verse number 18 reading from the New Living Translation Genesis 37 starting with verse number 18 when Joseph's brothers saw him coming they recognized him in the distance as he approached they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give me a few minutes to deal with the subject when your dream turns into a nightmare. When your dreams turn into a nightmare. Bless us real good in Jesus name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, over the last couple of weeks, we have been exploring the life of Joseph. The first week we looked at the birth, the boyhood, and the battles of Joseph. The week after that we looked at the pureness of Joseph, the promotion of Joseph, the promises given to Joseph. Which brings us to our presentation today, Love and Hip Hop Genesis Continues. <laughs> Has anyone ever experienced a season in your life when it appears your dreams have turned into nightmares. You were sure things you have sure th you were sure things were going to work out in a certain way and then the bottom fell out from under everything. Maybe it was a child that did not turn out the way you envisioned. Maybe it was a financial setback that broke your heart. Maybe it was a marriage that did not go as you had dreamed it would go. Life often seems, child of God, to shatter our dreams. When our dreams are shattered, it often leaves us devastated, confused, and upset. Can I talk to you just for a minute here? Sometimes we might be tempted to think that God has forgotten all about us as well as about our dreams. Mm. We might even wonder if God has forgotten about the things he promised us in his word. Y'all know how the devil plays with our minds as we go through some tough seasons in our lives. 
I wonder how Joseph felt as the events of this passage worked themselves out, child of God. I wonder if he questioned the dreams God had already given him. Surely when his brothers ripped off his coat, threw him into a pit, and ignored his pleas and sold him into slavery, Joseph must have felt like his dreams had become nightmares. Can I talk just for a minute here? I've discovered life can seem so unfair at times, but as this text teaches us, God is still in control. Ha! Somebody shout hallelujah. I've come by to remind you if God gave you the dream, baby, he's able to guarantee it becomes a reality. Somebody holler, he's able. Today I want to look at Joseph's trustworthiness, Joseph's devotion, and Joseph's character. Are you, are you still with me here? Joseph's trustworthiness, child of God, let's look at that. Uh, Jacob wanted Joseph to go and check on the welfare of his brothers. They were off away from the family tending their father's sheep. There are a couple of reasons why Jacob was concerned about his sons. As you dig into the text, child of God, number one, they were in Shechem. It was here that Simon and Levi had murdered an uh, yes, entire village to avenge the rape of their sister Dinah. Are you still with me here? Surely there was anger in that region and Jacob feared for their safety. Number two, his sons had proven that they were not trustworthy. Joseph had already had to bring his father an evil report regarding some of his brothers while they were on shepherd's duty. Mm. Jacob was probably wondering what evil they were up to now. Jacob sends Joseph because he can be trusted to do the right thing and to tell his father the truth. Child of God, I want to ask you a question. Can God trust you even when your assignment is hard? Mm. Even when your assignment is painful, can God trust you? Even when the assignment hurts, even when the assignment is ugly, can God trust you with the assignment? Uh, I kind of feel like preaching just for a few minutes here. Child of God, eventually Jacob was out of touch uh, with all that was happening in his own family. Uh, uh, Jacob appears to have been a father who was occupied, who has who was occupied with things other than the need of his family mm. had he been paying attention he would have known that Joseph's older brothers hated him he would have known that their hatred had been growing and been re had reached a point that they couldn't even speak to him in a kind manner I'm right there in the text either Jacob was out of touch with his family or he underestimated the extent of the problems in his own home can I talk just for a minute here Child of God, he may have known what was happening, but believed that other boys were not capable of harming Joseph. As, 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 as we will see, not only were they capable of harming him, they were also capable of murder. Mm, yes, thugs gone wild. I wish I could, yes, had a few people in the house today. Mm. Yes, if there's a lesson for us here, uh, parents, uh, yes, should pay close attention to what's happening in the lives of their children. Uh, can, can I talk to you for a minute? Mm. Uh, yes, you need to know who their friends are. The Bible is clear. The wrong kind of friends can ruin a life and destroy a testimony. Can I prove it to you? Mm. First Corinthians 15 33, the Bible says, don't be fooled by those who say such things for bad company cor uh, yeah, corrupts good character yes you need to know how they're spending their time as well as how they're spending their money uh, yes you need to know what is happening in their lives you need to know what they're, what they're looking at on the internet yeah Yes, you need to know what they're texting. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yeah. you have a right to know, child of God. Children will demand privacy, but as long as they live in your house, there is, uh, yes, their business is your business. Do I have 
a, a witness in the house. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, can I preach this thing just for a few minutes? Uh, they killed me talking about privacy, privacy this and privacy that. Uh, baby, you need to take the door off the hinges. Uh, do I have a witness in the house? Some people uh, act as though, yes, you owe them this and that. The devil is a lie. Uh, this is a generation that thinks they're entitled. You're not entitled to nothing. Uh, baby, everything you have is because your mama or your daddy did it. Do I have any real people that, that know what I'm talking about? Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Look at somebody say, get in their business. Yeah, yeah, get in it. I mean, get all up in it. Yeah, yeah. I know some young kids that they mad at me. I ain't concerned about you today, baby. I, I got to tell you the truth. Get all up in the bit. Look at somebody and say, get all up in their business. Get yes, baby. You'll be glad you did later. Because there's some things that need to be shut down before it gets too late. Do I have somebody? Hey, somebody shout hallelujah understand so joseph could be trusted with his assignment but secondly let's look at joseph's devotion the bible says in verses 13 through 17 look at it the bible says without question joseph accepts his father's assignment and he leaves and goes to find his brothers he knows the risk but obedience to his father's command is his first priority that sounds like somebody else we know when jesus came into the world he was sent by his father but he came willingly Jesus did not have to be forced to come into this world to die for sinners he came because it was the will of his father our lives ought to be marked by the same level of obedience are you still with me here when God speaks we should respond humbly and immediately to carry out his will nothing demonstrates our father our love for Jesus any more than our willing to obey his will. First uh, John chapter 5 verses 2 and 3 the Bible says we know mm -hmm, we love God's children uh, if we love God and obey his commandments. Uh, loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments uh, are not burdensome. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way had Jacob and Joseph known that when they uh, say goodbye to one another uh, that it would be uh, yes 20 years uh, I'm sure that would have departed differently can I teach this thing just for a few minutes child of God you've got to be careful when your loved ones leave the house or leave your presence yes you don't have any regrets there's some stuff that you need to get off of your chest get it off of your chest because you never know if that's the last time you're going to see them it was 20 years Jacob sent Joseph off to look for his brothers maybe he thought it was going to be a few days but but a few days turned into 20 years. Uh, Minister P, when Joseph arrived in Shechem, he did not find his brothers there. Uh, a man tells him that they left Shechem and yes, have now gone to Dothan. Many people might have concluded uh, that they had fulfilled their obligation when they could not find their brothers in the place their father had sent them. But many would have turned around and gone home. Not Joseph, child of God. Look how devoted Joseph is. His father wanted to know the welfare of his sons and he wanted word brought back to him. Joseph wanted to carry out the will of his father even if it meant going beyond and yes the original command are you still with me here so in other words sometimes child of God we're going to be inconvenienced in our walk with Christ sometimes we've got to go out of our way just to get some information back to God every assignment is not going to be beautiful every assignment is not going to be lovely but there's some yes devoted believers that say God come hell or high water I'm going to be obedient to take yes do what you tell me to do sometimes you've got to feed people you don't want to feed sometimes you got to provide gas for people you don't want to provide gas to sometimes do I have a witness in the house sometimes baby you got to sit up there and house some people that you don't want to house but it's all because God has given my assign gave me me assignment to do just that so in other words I'm here to do what God 
has told me to do and not what man has told me to do. Man will have you in trouble. Man will have you bankrupt. Do I have a witness in the house? Man will have you frustrated and ready to throw in the towel. But I declare if you just be obedient to what God has told you to do, everything is going to be all right. Can I talk just for a few minutes here? again like Jesus Jesus came into this world to seek the lost sheep of Israel he pursued them with steadfast love but they rejected him he continued to pursue them eventually dying on the cross to open the way of salvation for all of us child of God Jesus was not deterred by man's rejection and hatred if they hated Jesus then they gonna hate on you but you ought to be happy about that. He died. He loved every sinner and died to set them free. Child of God, we should have that same desire within our hearts. Nothing should be able to prevent us from accomplishing our Father's will for our lives. Regardless of the cost, the pain, or the opposition, we should seek to serve him and be everything he saved us to be. I don't know about you, but I want to reach the end of my journey knowing I did everything he told me to do. Do I have a witness in the house? I heard the songwriter put it like this, if I can help somebody as I pass along this way, then I know my living is not in vain. Can I preach for a few minutes here? Look at somebody say, neighbor, there comes a time when you gotta go out of your way just to be nice to people. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I knew I matured. When I saw people I knew did not like me, they couldn't stand me. They went out down another aisle just to get away from me. But I saw them baby. I was able to embrace them and give them a hug and say, hey, how you doing? Do I have a witness in here? In fact, let me just take you do one better uh, yes they're going down the other aisle uh, and you meet them as they try to run from you uh, and I meet them right there saying baby uh, how you doing uh, may the Lord God bless you real good uh, how's your family uh, how's your children uh, I want God to bless you going and coming uh, do I have any real people in the house today uh, sometimes you gotta go out of your way uh, just to be yes uh, that's when you know uh, that you're going higher in God. Uh, that's when you know you are maturing in God. Uh, when you can greet somebody uh, you know don't like you. Uh, when you can pray for somebody uh, you know talked about you like a dog. Uh, but you get in your closet and uh, say, God, I want you to bless them uh, and bless them real good. Uh, do I have any real people in the house? Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Child of God, understand. We see Joseph's trustworthiness. We see Joseph's devotion. He was devoted to his assignment. He said, come hell or high water, I've got to get the information back to my father. But lastly, let's look at Joseph's character. When Joseph arrives in Dothan, his brothers see him coming. The hatred began in their hearts and found uh, yes, soil, uh, yes, and had grown into a desire uh, to murder their own brother. Uh, uh, had these men arrested sin uh, when it first began to grow in their hearts? Uh, this whole episode would not, uh, yes, uh, be written. Uh, but I've discovered, child of God, uh, if you're not careful, uh, the enemy will allow uh, sin to fester in your heart. Uh, and yes, you go from despising them to hating them you need to get rid of it and get rid of it fast do I have a witness in here let me say it like this ain't no person on this side of heaven worth you going to hell over 
yeah can I preach this thing like I feel it I'm running I discover there ain't nobody important enough to make me give up on my God the devil is a lie you can call me everything you want to call me but I'm coming to tell you I'm not going to hell because of you do I have a witness in here you know back in the day you would have busted hell wide open just to get them back you want to pay them back real good do I have any real people in fact you plotted you schemed real good I'm going to get them the next thing the next time I run into them the next time I see them I'm going to give them a piece of my mind but God arrested your tongue has anybody been there before God would not allow you to say nothing but bless you or say hi I don't know but I thank God that he held my tongue because ain't nobody worth going to hell over do I have any real people in the house yeah somebody say get rid of it get rid of the sin out of your heart so it does not turn to bitterness so it does not turn to anger somebody say get rid of it child of God they didn't they allowed dislike to grow into a full blown hatred uh, yes now they desire to murder their brother the true nature of these men is on full display in these verses first they have a desire in their hearts to kill Joseph they hate him so much that they were willing to put him yes to death to get rid of him then they they ridiculed him because of his words. They called him this dreamer. Are you still with me here? Here comes the dreamer. Miss Belinda, there is not a hint of brotherly love in their voices. They're so callous that they want to kill him and toss his body into a pit. They even devise a plan to cover up their deed. They believe that they can derail Joseph's dreams so they can uh, yes uh, if they just kill him uh, these men have no concept uh, of the sovereign power of God uh, of course this is what would have happened to Jesus uh, when he came the people he came to uh, uh, say they rejected him uh, they hated him for his words uh, they rejected his message uh, and they desired to see him dead uh, they believed that killing Jesus uh, would put an end to his message uh, they were dead wrong child of God uh, uh, yes uh, they saw to it uh, that he died uh, but they couldn't see that his death uh, would accomplish more than his life uh, I feel like preaching for a few minutes here uh, they could not see uh, that he would get up from the dead three days later uh, the Bible says Reuben uh, displays his nature too uh, uh, he is weak uh, and is not now vacillating huh? from one position to another huh? he's like water child of God huh? he's totally unstable huh? the Bible says huh? on one hand he's more has a more has more reason to hate Joseph huh? than any of his brothers huh? he knows that Joseph huh? has been chosen to take his place huh? as head of the family huh? can I walk through this text here huh? on the other hand huh? Reuben knows uh, that he uh, has a responsibility uh, to protect his little brother uh, if at all possible uh, he's going back and forth uh, sister bell on one hand uh, he deserves the head of the family uh, because he is the firstborn uh, but he knows joseph uh, is now going to be the head of the family uh, he tells the rest uh, that they should not kill joseph uh, but just throw him in a pit uh, I feel like preaching in here in the desert child of God and let him die 
of starvation and thirst. Of course, Reuben is planning to rescue Joseph when the other brothers are not around. Again, the hatred of the rest of the brothers is evident in the fact that they were willing to go along with this plan. What a wicked bunch of men these brothers are. I told you thugs gone wild. God knows I feel like preaching in here. These men were so callous that they threw their brother into a pit and sat down and began to eat lunch. Y'all read this in the Bible. There's no record of Joseph's crying or begging for help in these verses. But verse uh, chapter 42, verse number 21 makes it clear that Joseph cried out and they turned a deaf ear to his plea. Apparently Reuben had to leave and go elsewhere. And while he's gone, the Midianite merchant, they start passing through. They were heading towards Egypt to sell their wares. Judah convinces the other brothers that they should at least sell Joseph and not kill him. After all, he is their brother. The rest of the brothers like this idea. And that is just what they did. They sold Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. That was a price of a crippled slave. Are y'all still with me here? His brothers sold him like he was a piece of trash. They sold him for eight ounces of silver today that will come to brother Kenny $98.24 you mean to tell me you gonna sell me for $98.24 I told your thugs gone wild somebody shout hallelujah the brothers were so unfulfilling uh, uh, and so filled with hatred uh, for Joseph that they sell him uh, to the merchants and watch him haul away uh, as a common slave. Uh, Joseph's experience uh, as a slave was uh, anything but pleasant. Uh, in fact, Psalm 105 uh, verses 18 and 19 says, uh, they bruised his feet with fetters. Uh, they placed his neck in an iron collar uh, until the time came to fulfill his dreams. Uh, the Lord tested Joseph's character. Uh, are you still with me here? Uh, and again, Joseph uh, is a picture of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, he was hated by his brethren. Uh, he was betrayed by someone uh, who should have loved him. Uh, he was also betrayed uh, for the price of a slave. Uh, praise the name of our God. Uh, he loves us so much that he endured the shame the hatred and still he died to save you and me when Reuben returns he finds that Joseph is gone he panics because he knows his father will blame him Reuben has been on the outs with Jacob ever since he committed adultery with his father's wife Bilhah are y'all still with me here you mean a whole lot of drama I told y'all love and hip hop genesis uh, it's right here in the text uh, these verses give us uh, a little hope that Reuben uh, is maturing into something uh, resembling a leader uh, uh, his brothers child of God uh, they conspire together to cook up a plan uh, this time they were out to deceive their father uh, they take the despised coat uh, and dip it in blood of a goat uh, and take it home to Jacob uh, child of God, one lie always leads to another. Can I preach for a few minutes here? When you tell one lie, it will not stay right there before you know it. Here comes another lie to try to cover up the first lie that you told. The best policy is always tell the truth regardless of the personal cost. Can I preach for a few minutes?
men is here. There's no compassion for their father. In these words, child of God, they bring him the bloodstained coat and they ask him to identify it. These men have no heart. They care nothing but for themselves. Yes, and often, child of God, most people like that. They don't think about nobody but themselves. The world is filled with people just like that. They do not care who they have to step on to achieve their goals. They do not care what they have to do in order to reach the top. They care for nothing but getting their own way all of the time. And they do not care who they hurt in the process. Something is desperately wrong with a person like this. Are you still with me here? Most likely they're not saved. Most definitely they're not displaying the Christ-likeness in their life. Our walk with the Lord is to be marked by a desire to place others ahead of ourselves. Our walk is to be marked by a desire to ease the burdens of those around us. Our walk with the Lord is marked by us loving, yes, as Christ loved his church. Y'all excuse me, but I feel like preaching just for a few minutes here. Jacob recognizes the coat. He knows it belongs to Joseph. And immediately he assumes that his beloved son is dead. Having been killed by wild animals, Pop Reed Jacob is heartbroken. He falls into the depths of despair. He refuses to be comforted by his family. Vowing to grieve to the day he joins Joseph in death. These cold, callous men have broken their father's heart and they don't even care. These heartless men reveal their hypocrisy by trying to comfort their father in his grief. You mean to tell me you gonna make me grieve and then stand there and hand me a tissue to wipe the tears from my face? Ain't they just dirty and low down? Can I preach for a few minutes here? Not a single one of them. Them cowards had the courage to stand up and tell Jacob the truth. In the end, however, their father was in better shape than they were in. He lived every day with grief and they lived every day with guilt. The knowledge of what they had done ate them up until Joseph faced them some years later. Can I preach this thing for a few minutes here? I've come by to tell you there is power, a such thing as the power of guilt. Yes, you thinking people got away with doing dirty and doing you wrong. I've come by to tell you, you don't know the guilt that they're carrying. You don't know the guilt that meets them the first thing in the morning and lays down with them at night. Do I have a witness in here? It will eat at you until the problem is dealt with. The best thing you and I can do with our wrongs is to make them right. We need to apologize to people that we have offended. We need to restore what we have taken. We need to get honest about our sins. That's the only way to get rid of guilt. Can I preach for a few minutes here? Proverbs 28, 13. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says people who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Somebody holler mercy in here. Somebody holler mercy in here. This is a sad place to step out of the story. Joseph is gone, sold as a slave, and headed off to Egypt in chains. Jacob is heartbroken. 
and inconsolable. The beloved son of his wife Rachel, his choice to be the head of the family is now on his way to death. Child of God, the brothers are guilty of a terrible sin against their brother, their father, their family, and their God. They're being eaten alive by guilt. A prosperous, promising family has been plunged into the depths of gloom and hopelessness. It would appear that Joseph's dreams have become nightmares. It appears his dreams will never come to pass. But I've come by with some good news behind the scene. Look at somebody say behind the scene. Yeah, behind the scenes of this terrible tragedy. God's sovereign hand is moving. I've come by to tell you just because you don't see God moving does not mean God ain't doing something about it. Can I preach this thing like I feel it? There's a word here for all of us. There will be times when things appear hopeless. There will be times when the shattered pieces of our dreams will lie all around us. There will be a time where we find ourselves in darkness and despair. But I've come by to tell you, whatever you do, hold on to the promises that God gave you. Miss Shelley, every now and then, I got to go back and get Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for our good. Every now and then, I got to go back and get Psalm 20, 37, verse number 23. The Lord directs the steps of the ungodly. The godly, he delights in every detail of their life. Every now and then, I got to go back and get Job 23 and 10. But he knows after I come out of this fire, I shall come forth as pure gold. We must understand that despite of how things look in the human eye, God has got my back. I've come by to tell you, God has got your back. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, God has got your back. Do I have a witness in here? I heard the Lord declare, I didn't bring you this far to leave you now. I read something this week that about drove me crazy. It says imagination will bring that in which you believe. I said, Lord, I imagine myself delivered. I imagine myself healed. I imagine myself walking in the anointing. I imagine doors opening. I imagine the devil getting up off of me. I imagine me walking in the fullness of God. Can I preach just for a few minutes here? I've come by to tell you, if you can imagine it, God can do it now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think is there anybody in here today you can imagine you can imagine it say yeah say yeah say yeah look at your neighbor and say neighbor I imagine you set free say yeah whom the son has set free is free indeed say yeah say yeah say yeah somebody say hold on 
to what God gave you. Hold on to it. Hold on to the promise. Hold on to what God gave you. Hold on to your dreams. Hold on to it. may be seated. (sighs) There's some dreams that God gave you. It appears they've been turned to nightmares. Come by to tell you, hold on to what God has promised you. The problem we have is this we don't know the future. So from the time the dream is given and the time the manifestation of it we have no clue as to the in between if I knew I had to go through some of the stuff I went through I wouldn't hold on So God is saying, I need you to trust me every step of the way. If I gave it to you, it's got to come to pass. But people walked out on my, walked out on on my life. People betrayed me stabbed me in the back had I known I had to go through this pain I wouldn't have made it to the end so God says I'm going to hide the middle I'm going to show you the beginning and the end but I'm going to hide the middle you can't handle Sing the middle of it before you get to the end. So I have to trust God like Joseph trusted God. Okay, I'm going to say this and uh, we'll continue next week. Um, Be careful who you share your dreams with. These are my brothers. I should be able to share. And they be happy. But even those that are closest to you can't always handle what God gives you. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Ah, Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The altar is open. Doors of the church are open. For anyone here today, you might be looking for a new church home. 
you desire to be saved, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you're in a backslidden state. If you're here, will you come and make Jesus Lord of your life? If you're here, get up and come now. Get up and come now. If you're here. You made a way. If you're here, will you come, my brother, my sister? Only. Will you get up and come now? You're looking for a new church home. You're looking for covering. Will you get up and come? You want to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ today? If you're here, will you come? You. You made If you're here, will you come? And we're standing here only because you made If you're here, will you come? Will you come? Get up and step out on faith. Let today be your day. Let today be your day. Yes, you call. You call the world yes. with your power. You perform. You perform miracles. If you hear what you There is nothing that? that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made you move mountains. Yeah. You call the world to work. Get up and come. With your Get up and come. Will you come? Will you come? That's impossible. That's impossible. And we're standing here. Only. Only because you move my He's here. He's here waiting on you. Will you come? Get up and come now. You made, you made, you made a way. You made, you made, you made a way. You made, you made, you made a way. Glory, 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 glory. You made, you made a way. Don't know. Don't, don't know, know how. Don't know how, but you did it. You made, yeah. you made a way. Don't know, don't know how, but don't you know, made how. Made how. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you don't did know it. How. Don't know how, but you don't did know it. how. Don't know how, but you don't did know it. how. Don't know how, but you don't did know it. how. Don't know how, but you did it. You Standing here only, only because you made, you made a way, and we're standing here only because you made a way, and we're standing here. Amen. We've only done it, the Lord. You made a way. That's it. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We are. Once again, grateful to all of our guests. You're welcome to Mount Zion, the church where everybody is somebody. Thank God for each and every one of you worshiping with us on today. 
amen. I pray that you have a blessed day on today. Stand as we prepare to leave this place, but not the presence of God. CDs and DVDs are available. Today's worship service. Remember all of our announcements. Tomorrow is the homegoing celebration of Sister April uh, Lewis, uh, the mother of Diane Lewis, and uh, the cousin of our First Lady. So we ask that you lift the family up in prayer. 11 o'clock wait, 12 o'clock service. Leaders here.